Oh, do you watch the news? Does anything bad ever happen to you? It's almost like, you know, that spiritual, that we just fake it. Like, oh, you know, I'm just happy, 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 happy all the time. Joy in Jesus' life and be better. Woo! But there, I just found that so many people who live this way are just like, they're artificial. It's like they're out of touch with the pain, the hardship, the mess that actually exists on this planet and in our relationships. So, I mean, but one way we could go, we just try to fake it. Uh, here's another way we could go. We could, we could j just try to, you know, find it again. We either fake it or try to find it. And, and that's when we go, I got to go somewhere where I get that emotional high back. And, and then people start doing all sorts of things. Man, I got to find another church where I can get all emotionally worked up right again. I, I got to find another theological system that suddenly makes me all high again about Jesus. I got to I got to read this different author. I got to listen to this other teacher. Oh, the insights are so great. And you know, here's what I just find as the decades go by in my life. Here's what I find. I find a number of Christians. They're just looking. Back, they just want the emotional high they got when they first thought, found Jesus. I want that good feeling back. And wherever I got to go, whoever I got to follow, whatever philosophy I need to embrace, whatever new thing is out there, that's what I'm going to do. Because, man, I'm looking for the high. And, you know, the high does feel good. It's just, it's not, it's just emotional. How many Christians cannot distinguish between spiritual and emotional? Because while they often go together, they are not synonyms. So I'm trying to fake it. Some try to find it. You know what some do? Some just say, forget it. I'm just giving up on the God deal. I mean, seriously. Okay? I tried the God thing. The God thing didn't work out. There were too many questions there. It didn't mess with the life. I'm just checking out of the God thing. Man, I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to find something else, even if there, maybe there is nothing else. Or maybe it's like, well, I still think the God deal might be true, but it's just not working for me, and I don't know. I'm just, I'm just checking out. I mean, those are, those are very common responses to this crisis of faith. When, when faith and sight collide and we feel disillusioned or disappointed and, and life gets hard and we, we hit this dip in our spiritual lives. I mean, that's just so easy to do. Fake it. Find it. Forget it. But there's another option. Now, if you're looking at this picture, you're probably going, I, I don't know what's up here, but I, I think it's a good thing. You know, it's like, this church going somewhere. And, 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 and it, it does. And we will talk about this as the next couple of weeks unfold. But the only people who ever get here are the ones who decide they're not going to just fake it. They're not going to try to go find it. They're, they're, they're not going to say, oh, just forget it. They're, they're going to take another option. And that other option is called, I'm going to forge ahead. I'm going to forge ahead. It, it's I am going to embrace faith and doubt at the same time. Do you know that's exa exactly what Habakkuk did? In fact, I think we have this verse, oh, don't we, Jeff? It, it's it, it, Habakkuk, again, chapter one, as it comes to a conclusion, he says, oh, Lord, you know, after he got that great thing about, you know, you don't seem to care, you don't seem to do much when you could, what you do do isn't fair, and then God said, you know, here's what I'm going to do. Habakkuk goes, oh, Lord, are you not from everlasting? My God, my Holy One, we will not die. We'll be okay. Oh, Lord, you have appointed them. That was the Babylonians to execute judgment over rock. You have ordained them to punish. Those are expressions of faith. God, you're in control. God, we're going to be okay. God, you are the eternal, wise, and powerful one. Faith. Here's his next breath. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrong. Why did he tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent when the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves? It's like, whoa, Habakkuk, make up your mind. Is it faith or is it doubt? And Habakkuk said, it's both. I cannot let go of my questions. I cannot let go of my faith. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang on to them both. And I'm just going to see where this goes. Can I make a suggestion to you? The only way that we are going to progress 
and become people who are really close to God, people who are really powerful in God, people who really grow deep in God, is that when we get to those places where faith and sight collide and we are filled with doubt, that what we do is we embrace both our faith and our questions and we refuse to let go of either one. Did you know it's actually possible to do that? There's this incredible story in the Bible. It's found in Mark chapter 9. Check this out. Jesus and uh, Peter, James, and John, they'd gone up to the top of a mountain and had this really incredible spiritual experience. And when they came back down, <laughs> they came back down from the incredible spiritual experience and found a mess and a, an argument blazing in religious circles. Go figure. An argument blazing in religious circles. This is when they, uh, Jesus and his three buddies, they, 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 they came to the other disciples. They, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. And, and as soon as the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about, Jesus asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I, I brought you my son who was possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of his speech. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth. He gnashes his teeth. He becomes rigid. And I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Oh, unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy to Jesus. And when the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around foaming at the mouth. Do you get the picture? It's kind of ugly. Do you see the boy just absolutely just overtaken by whatever's going on here? Can you see the father's hearts just smashed? Can you see the religious people just trying to figure out what theology best explains this? As though that's what matters. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has it been like this? From a childhood, the boy's father answered, it has often thrown him into fire or into water to try to kill him. But if, get this, Jesus, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Man, can't you just feel the dad's heart here? It's like, I've tried everything. If you can do anything, please have mercy on us and help. Well, Jesus said, if, if, if you can, you know, he's talking about, you're saying, if you can, if I can, he said, everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. <laughs> Jesus and he healed the boy. He didn't go, no, man, I say, you, as soon as you get rid of that unbelief and you really believe, you let me know. He says, no, Jesus goes, I get it. You believe and you don't believe at the same time. You believe that you have questions. You believe that you have reservations. You're just being honest. And that honesty is good enough for me. And I will work now on your behalf to give you what your request is. How often when, when faith and sight collide, we are like, God, I believe, but boy, there's a part of me that struggles with believing. And what we need to do when we hit that spiritual dip is rather than faking it or trying to find the emotions again, or rather than saying, forget the whole thing, forge ahead, embrace faith and your doubt, faith and your questions at the same time, and just wrestle with it.